Hello, I'm Dr. Rafi Romano. I'm very honored and pleased to present you my 11th lecture in the series of Lingual Orthodontics and Joy Brackets by Adenta. Today I want to concentrate on the procedure of interproximal reduction. Interproximal reduction, which has few names like IPR, stripping, uh, tooth reduction, all of these uh, options are meant to describe a procedure where we take a very, very minimal amount of tooth structure in the contact point between the teeth. We actually um, peel some of the enamel, like you shave, very, very minimal in a very, very calculated way in order to gain space and avoid extractions. Uh, we will overview the IPR principles, the IPR techniques, and of course the IPR precautions. Now, when we say, uh, talk about uh, interproximal reduction, let's view first what are the options to solve crowding. Now, when we have crowding, we can gain space by expansion and proclination. Uh, this sometimes is done with combination of, uh, with IPR in order to get a nice arch first, then do a stripping and take the teeth back. So one uh, option is expansion and proclination. The second option will be distalization uh, using uh, some anchorage methods like transpalatal bar, headgear or mini implants as you can see in these illustrations. Um, uh, it is very um, important to diagnose whether uh, distalization is a true um, treatment option since uh, if we push all the teeth to the tuberosity and uh, cause impaction of the second molars, we actually do not uh, solve any uh, crowding problem but uh, transfer it to another place. Uh, the other option, of course, is extraction. It can be extraction of one anterior tooth or two posterior teeth, usually the premolars, uh, which is, of course, uh, a very um, easy uh, option for the doctor because we get immediately enough space but we have to make sure that we don't get too much space and we can achieve an aesthetic and functional result while extracting especially if the extraction is not symmetrical. And now we can concentrate on the interproximal reduction technique uh, which we now want to review in this lecture. Interproximal reduction IPR is a quick and easy procedure when the orthodontist use some very precise tools in order to change the shape and the size of the teeth primarily on the sides of the teeth and not uh, in the sizal uh, edge or in the buccalolingual side. Now, uh, the enamel width is very um, uh, uh, different in, in different, si uh, different areas and usually uh, this um, amount varies between 1 mm to uh, 3 mm in the posterior teeth. Now, there are many researchers uh, that reviewed all the IPR procedure and the result of the researchers are that we don't have any increase of the decay in all the surfaces that uh, had gone over IPR. Of course, if it's done in the uh, amount that is indicated. We, do, we have no increase in sensitivity and uh, uh, all this is when reasonable limits are kept. Now, in human, the enamel varies in thickness over the surface of the tooth and often the, th uh, the thickness at the cusps is up to two and a half millimeter. When we go to the cemento enamel junction, it gets thinner and thinner. So when we do the IPR, uh, it is mostly recommended to do it above the contact point where the enamel is the uh, widest possible. 
Now, what are the principles for the IPR? First of all, we don't do any stripping before we put the appliance. We want to make sure that these gaps that we are creating are not closed before we start the treatment. Second, we do not do any stripping to rotate the teeth. It is very, very complicated, very difficult, even impossible to, cap, to keep the shape of this uh, interproximal areas in a good way and very smooth and very polished if we do it with teeth that are overlapping each other. Uh, now, it is mostly recommended to do the stripping in the posterior area where uh, we have the thickest um, uh, amount of enamel but if we need to do it in the anterior region it is mostly recommended to do it when the teeth need to be reshaped. What does it mean? If you have, for example, a, a lateral incisor which has triangular shape, the, these uh, teeth are the first one to be reshaped. Also, we can gain some nice papilla shape in the gingiva when we do reshape of these triangular teeth. So when you choose where to gain space, it is recommended to look tooth by tooth and not only do the Bolton uh, analysis to, to see how much we need to um, uh, reduce, but also to choose the appropriate teeth where we want to do it. Now, uh, the existing guideline of half millimeter in um, the anterior uh, region between two teeth, meaning around 0 0.25 millimeter on each side, mesial and distal, in the anterior area, and one millimeter in the posterior teeth is still very valid in the literature and very cautious. Meaning that although Sheridan in the past indicated that we can gain up to 10 millimeter in uh, every arch uh, by doing this IPR, I highly recommend you to keep this um, a, um, thing in your mind, not to do more than 0.5 millimeter in the anterior region and one millimeter in the posterior region. The tools we use uh, are different. I, I use many times disc, uh, perforated discs. I use the one by Comet. Uh, I use some horico strip, metal strip, that can be on one side or both sides if you want to do it simultaneously. I use some delicate strips in order to polish the area. And I use some measuring gauge that has uh, numbers on it and I can measure exactly how much I strip. Not always I do the whole plan one time. If I plan to do a 0.5 millimeter stripping, I may do it in two or three times uh, on different um, visits of the patient in order to make sure not to do too much and also to control the biomechanic of the teeth movement to that area where we, do, where we did the IPR. You can see here a video on, uh, of IPR in lingual orthodontics. Uh, in this uh, um, instance, you can see how it is done in one side, horico strip, where we slowly get uh, inside the contact point, uh, very careful not to damage the gingiva or the papilla. And it is, of course, can be done very carefully, very professionally, and, and uh, uh, very carefully with a uh, perforated uh, disc, as you can see here. After doing these gaps with the disc, we polish the area uh, nicely with hands instruments until we make sure that the area is uh, nicely shaped and polished. Now, after I do the IPR, I always send the patient to the hygienist room where she uh, applies some fluoride trays in order to strengthen the enamel, uh, the exposed new enamel and to remineralize re the area to make it more hard and to um, have more resistance to future sensitivity or decay. In summary, uh, IPR, interproximal stripping uh, reduction, is a very safe and minimal invasive uh, procedure in, if properly done, of course. We have to use a very accurate tools in order to measure the amount of IPR and we have to keep the tooth surface smooth and aesthetic. 
And maybe the last recommendation I would say is to make a note in the patient chart exactly how much you did stripping in every uh, visit and also to acknowledge the patient in advance and after the stripping that the procedure was done in order to avoid any future problems. I hope to see you in my next lecture in the Lingual Orthodontic Series on Joy Brackett's Addenda. Bye-bye.